It's been brought to my attention by myself that my How I Draw a Lego Minifigure video way back in January of last year could use a bit of an update. It's a good video, don't get me wrong, but the mic quality is weird, the video borders are off, and don't even get me started on the fez. Blech. Kids those days. In that spirit, you could see this video as a sequel. Or a reboot. Who cares? A How I Draw a Lego Minifigure 2021 edition, if you will. But I didn't just want to retread drawing a regular character like I did last year. Thinking about how I could set this apart, I got to, well, thinking. Over the past year, I have drawn many minifigures based on my own designs for superheroes, Marvel and DC included, all under the banner of the Nthverse. The figures shown on screen? Nowhere near all of what I've drawn. You can find most of them on my Instagram page. I've been trying to figure out how to bring them to YouTube, and a time lapse sounded like a great way to do it. I'll still be working out the kinks, but for now, here's how I draw a minifigure. But not just any minifigure, the long-awaited, friendly neighborhood, Nthverse Spider-Man. Also, like last year, I feel the responsibility to include this disclaimer. If you are sensitive to fast swipey swipey or fast clicky clicky on computers, this video might not be for you. So if you just want to listen to it, or skip right to the end, I do not blame you. You are totally within your rights. Fast and loose. I can do fast and loose. I can talk fast and loose. Okay, so. Since last year I did cover outlining and drawing a figure in the regular sense, I won't go as in-depth with my explanations as I did last year as I will today. I'll just go over the basics, and then we can get to the new stuff as soon as Video Me has caught up with Voice Me. My settings have not really changed from what they were last year. My figure base is usually at about 2,500 pixels wide, 2,000 pixels high. It's a good resolution to get what my friends like to call crisp figures. The picture I am using is from Mechabricks, just screenshotted, and the program I am currently drawing on is Fire Alpaca. Like I said last year, I've used this for a long time. It's a great program to use. It's totally worth it. Just, you gotta download it. It's great. Right now, I am drawing with the 15 pixels standard pen. Gives a good, again, crisp outline. And it's a good starting weight in case you wanted to experiment with it later down the line. It's good. When it comes to tracing out minifigures, you have to realize that minifigures are ridiculously geometric. Everything is either straight or curved, and that's pretty much it. There's no diagonal lines, there's no parabolas. The only real places where those come up is on minifigure torsos or designs like that. Those don't usually come up often, so it's moot. Knowing that, the straight line tool is your best friend. Just press down shift, click, and then pull it to wherever you want it to be, and you have a straight line. It's really simple, and it is a godsend when you're trying to trace something very straight, like this camera, or the legs, or the torso, wherever you find straight lines. With curved lines, like on the legs here, you don't have the crutch of the straight line tool, so you have to be able to make the curved line yourself. As you'll probably notice constantly throughout this video, I am erasing and redoing every curved line I make. I don't think I make it on my first try once. It's that difficult. But with practice, you'll be able to get the right shape you want and not have to redo it so much. A very good thing about drawing Mr. Parker here is that he is the standard minifigure and there's not really much going on other than that. He has the hood, sure, but there's no real accessories other than that that you have to work with. Sometimes you're drawing a minifigure and it's like Mr. Chef the Halo Man. A character like that is really difficult to draw because his armor is so intricate with so many little details and it's hard to know what you're working with. The best advice I have for intricate figures like those are to plan ahead. Sometimes you don't need to use the 15 pixel pen through the whole drawing. If you do, then sometimes the black drawings will be smushed together and you won't be able to recognize any of the details. So, 
Make sure to plan ahead when you're drawing a figure, any figure really, and be able to know what you're getting yourself into. And then a simple definition for transparent pieces, just make a new layer of the color you want the piece to be, fill that in of the shape, then make a new layer, lower the opacity of your brush, fill it in, and voila, you have a transparent piece. Here's the completed outline. You'll be able to find a more in-depth tutorial on how to do all of that in my video from last year, so if you want a better tutorial, please check that one out. But I just wanted to give a quick crash course of tips and tricks to get a good outline like this. And now for what I really wanted to talk about, how to create your own design. The very best advice I can give you when coming up with your own character designs is to plan ahead. And mostly I just mean this in conjunction with drawing on minifigures. You can mess around with crazy character design in any other form of art as much as you want, but minifigures are a very deceptively simple art style. It's good to know where you're going, but maybe not so much how to get there. You may be wondering why I had an image of a mecha brick Spider-Man and a little Captain America up at the beginning. Those were meant to give me an idea of what I was going for. Mock-ups are very useful. And Captain America was there because he's in the nth verse, and it's good to have a baseline for the kind of designs you have. In the context of the story, this Spider-Man would be around 19, meaning he's been Spider-Man for four years now. In that time, he's grown a lot, and he's really become the first thing people think of when you say superhero. The Avengers aren't a team yet, the X-Men are really controversial, and while Spider-Man has his fair share of critics, ah, <coughs> Jameson, <coughs> people like him. He's still not rich, at all, definitely not. But with every paycheck and help from Harry Osborn, he is able to make more advanced tech as he goes along, and that is the idea I'm going for with this suit. In my mind, this is his very first suit, just with some more augmentation to make it look a bit more advanced like better web shooters and better eyepieces. His hoodie and tennis shoes are reminders that he's still a kid and is just trying to get by on his own merit. And I think that gets across a lot about Peter Parker's character. This Peter is humble, and that characteristic is a big part of what went into planning this suit. As for the rest of his story, we'll see. I know that Aunt May knows who Peter is, and I know that Mary Jane knows who Peter is, and I know that Harry Osborn knows who Peter is. But where does that leave Peter? If Harry Osborn has been helping make his suit the whole time, what if he were to ever go bad? He'd know all of Peter's weaknesses. And would Aunt May ever try to stop Peter? Would she be the type to support him, or try to get in his way so he couldn't get himself hurt? And could MJ be getting tired of waiting on the sidelines? Sure, she loves Peter, but wouldn't there be a way for her to help fight crime as well? Who knows? This might sound a bit like overthinking it for just a simple drawing of Spider-Man, but you'd be surprised how much thinking things out like this would really help a drawing. It allows you to think of new ideas or new characters that you could add, or a little detail here and there referencing one of Peter's loved ones. It's honestly really fun. And now we're coming up to probably my favorite part of drawing a minifigure, coloring it in and seeing it all come together. But coloring also takes a lot of planning. You need to know which colors go together and which would make you want to gouge your eyes out with a spoon. I, for one, am a big fan of the MCU's Iron Spider. And I really like the color palette of red and black. So I merge those two with gold highlights and a black base to make sort of a merging of the Far From Home suit and the Iron Spider suit color-wise. This, again, works with the story. It insinuates that Peter kind of found a black hoodie and just put it on, 
and that was his suit for a while. And as he's gotten older, the gold highlights represent his adding on to it whenever he thinks he has an idea for how to improve things. Speaking of gold, that's really fun to mess around with. Give it a gradient. Gradients are really simple. All you gotta do is find the gradient tool, click on two different shades of gold, move the gradient tool down, and boom, you've got shiny. It makes a figure pop, so I highly recommend using it. It was also at this point that I realized that maybe I could include another color to break up the red and make sure it's not so overpowering. Experimentation, guys. It's worth it. And I stumbled upon dark blue. Dark blue contrasts great with the bright red. It might be why every movie Spider-Man has used it in the past. Just saying. And finally, that brings us to the final detailing of the figure. Making sure nothing is in the way of anything else, the colors all pop great, and making a wish to any genie who is nearby that your figure will look great upon completion and won't look like a dumpster fire. But even if it does, that is not the end of the world. Sometimes you need a good dumpster fire to burn away the gunk. Messing up here and there is a good way to know what works and what doesn't, and then getting better on the next try. But our web slinging warrior here is coming out pretty good. He's ready and willing to fight, well, anybody that gets in his way. Big Wheel, The Wall, Hydro Man, Stilt Man, and I guess some C-listers too, like the Sinister Six. Those guys are so lame. And of course, more than anything else, this Peter wants to make his uncle proud. One of the only people he couldn't save. Because, as we all know, with great power comes great responsibility. And that's the same for any spider in any universe, if Into the Spider-Verse taught me anything. And hopefully, like you, he's ready to meet foe and friend alike, and show 